the nasal spray releases a, a small amount of nitric oxide that acts as an anti-infective. So we've done many trials in the lab where we showed um, in, in our lab and then in other external labs that validated it, that shows that this um, kills viruses in general. So um, influenza, H1N1, um, RSV, rhinovirus, and then the, all the, the variants that we've tested of the SARS-CoV-2 as well. The mechanism is really to try we, we call it the hand sanitizer for the nose, right? Because the idea is that you, uh, the, the initial idea was that, that everyone will carry it in their pockets as you, you use it for, for preventing of, of getting the disease. Because if you got infected and the virus sits in your nose and starts multiplying, then you use the nasal spray to reduce the viral load to a point that it won't cause a disease. We do have a large prevention trial uh, going on, and the idea was to take it for prevention. Uh, what happened is that in order to do prevention, you need a very, very large trial. And initially, we thought, OK, if we go to the UK and do a trial showing um, that we can reduce viral load in people that are already positive tested with high viral load, um, and if we can reduce viral load at that point, then that means this will work for prevention. Um, and then we saw that actually it could work for treatment as well if you catch it early on. So it could, it could do both. The, the difference, for example, with other treatments um, like antiviral pills, uh, those are not meant to be taken daily, right? They, they cannot be used for prevention. This nasal spray has such a strong safety profile and there is nothing to prevent you from just using it daily or every time after you're outside to prevent from getting the disease. The only reason that was is because um, the majority of the clinical trial uh, was focused on what we call high risk. And high risk are either people that are non-vaccinated or people that are a little bit older or people with comorbidities. So that's where we saw the most strongest effect on, mm -hmm. on treatment. But that doesn't uh, preclude for anyone below age 45 to, to use it in the, in the future. The goal is, as I said, that, that everyone will use it for prevention. And, um, and, and some, some countries are allowing this as a preventative measurements uh, over the counter to use uh, of age 12 and up. So there have been quite a lot of people using it at a much lower age. We, we are really, really happy with the partnership with Glenmark. I think Glenmark has been an incredible partner. We, um, we, we initially got offered from quite a few companies in India to, to partner on this, and we chose Glenmark, and we are so happy with this choice. Uh, they've been all along the way a great partner. They've ramped up manufacturing quickly. Um, they've ran the clinical trial properly. They got the approval. Uh, they are uh, they they got a, a, a licensing agreement, so both manufacturing and distribution in India and some of the other countries in Southeast Asia as well. Uh, and so so the the um, the agreement that we have is is a full licensing agreement. They are my understanding getting it any day to the market. So hoping this can start help save people's lives. We are discussing potential future partnership on other products that, that Sanotize is developing, but we are open to, to discuss with, with other groups. We, uh, we've we worked on a, on a cream for acne, on uh, nasal lavage for sinusitis. So there's, there's lots of other opportunities that, um, of course, the partnership will, with Glenmark will, will give them the first priority, but, um, but, but we are open to, to discussions and we are hoping that this really is just the first product out of many. It is frustrating from our point. I think in some countries, because nitric oxide was previously approved to use for babies as a drug, um, it, it is on the drug list. Mm -hmm. uh, the way we deliver nitric oxide, it's a much lower dose. It's very, very safe. It has a, a really great, great safety profile. Uh, so the, the drug approval uh, is a longer process. You have to do a lot more trials. You have to spend a lot more money. And, and unfortunately, it takes longer time. 
Mm -hmm. uh, if if countries are allowing this because of the because this is a topical non systemic um, low dose of nitric oxide, some countries are allowing it as a as a medical device, and then the bar is is not as high to to show clinical trials, and you can get it to the market earlier. So um, that that's just the reality of regulatory.